Crimes committed against children are perceived by society as the most painful. The story of 11-year-old J.C. Lee Dugard, who was found after 18 years of absence, is impossible to read without shuddering. The close-knit family of J.C. Lee, which included her stepfather, Carl Probin, mother Terry Probin, and her younger stepsister, moved to the vicinity of Lake Tahoe, California, in 1990, considering it a peaceful and safe place to live. On June 10, 1991, Terry Probin went to work at a printing company, while J.C. Lee, wearing her favorite pink dress, walked along the road from home to the school bus stop. Suddenly, a car stopped near her. Assuming that the driver wanted to ask for directions, the girl approached him, only to be shot with a stun gun. The kidnappers pulled the child inside, turned around, and drove away. Carl Probin, who witnessed this from the window, chased after them on his bicycle, but the car vanished from sight. Some of the girl's classmates also witnessed the scene. The police swiftly took action, initially focusing on both the stepfather and the biological father of J.C. Lee. Information was spread through the media, including popular TV shows, and dozens of volunteers participated in the search. Flyers and posters supporting J.C. Lee were distributed nationwide, and the town was adorned with pink ribbons, her favorite color. Terry Probin created a group dedicated to collecting donations as a reward for anyone who could provide information about her daughter's whereabouts, but all efforts proved futile. The crime was committed by Philip Garrido, who was 40 years old at the time. In his teenage years, he suffered a head injury in a motorcycle accident, which led to him using illicit substances. At the age of 18, Philip was convicted for possession and distribution of illegal substances, and three years later, he was accused of a crime involving a 14-year-old girl. However, the case was dropped due to the victim's unwillingness to testify. In 1973, Garrido married his high school classmate, whom he systematically abused. In 1976, he kidnapped a 25-year-old casino worker locking her inside a warehouse. The police discovered the perpetrator, and Garrido ended up behind bars. His 50-year sentence was reduced due to good behavior, but he was required to undergo regular checks and wear a special bracelet. While still in prison, Garrido married Nancy Bocanegra, a relative of another inmate, and after his release, they settled in his mentally disabled mother's house near the city of Antioch. It was in this very house that they brought the terrified girl, who kept repeating that her family wouldn't be able to pay the ransom. Garrido shoved the girl into the shower stall, gave her towels, and ordered her to undress. J.C. managed to hold onto only the butterfly ring, which she had hidden from the kidnappers for 18 years. After that, he put handcuffs on her, sexually assaulted her, and led her naked to an outbuilding in the backyard of the house. He left her a bucket for a toilet and warned that if she attempted to escape, she would be torn apart by dogs, then locked the doors. That's how the girl lived for almost a month, surviving on fast food. Later, she was moved to a larger space with a television, although she was forbidden from watching news about her own case and she remained shackled. Garrido would tell J.C. Lee about angels and demons, claiming to be a servant of God and that she was the only one who could help him solve his problems. He called her Snoopy and regularly tormented her. Over time, Nancy began visiting the girl, bringing her treats and toys, and telling her various stories. J.C. Lee even began studying school subjects, but no one had any intention of setting her free. Although the girl would go out into the yard, which was fenced off after her first conversation with a neighbor about Garrido, and she would go on outings with her captors, who began calling her Alice in their car. In the spring of 1994, during the Easter holidays, Garrido told J.C. Lee that she was pregnant. Together, they started watching childbirth videos, and the girl began living in one of the rooms of the house, where there was a real bed. In August 1994, 14-year-old J.C. Lee gave birth to a daughter, and despite the horror of her situation, she felt less alone. 
In November 1997, she gave birth to another girl, and from that time on, Garrido's sexual abuse towards her ceased. The perpetrator owned a small printing business that produced business cards, and J.C. Alice was involved in their artistic design and handling customer calls. The girls were taught to refer to Philip and Nancy as their parents and to consider each other as sisters. They were homeschooled following the curriculum, and in terms of their development and appearance, they were hardly distinguishable from their peers. However, all three of them continued to live in makeshift rooms and tents in the backyard, which the police did not check during their periodic visits. Even a neighbor's call in 2006 regarding children next door living in unsuitable conditions yielded nothing except a warning that residing in improper structures was illegal. The question of why J.C. Lee, having access to a telephone and email, did not inform anyone about her whereabouts remains unanswered and clearly requires detailed examination by psychologists. The criminal maintained a blog dedicated to his own Church of God's Will, claiming that he could control sound through the power of his mind and recorded religious psalms in his own rendition. In August 2009, he submitted a note to the FBI office in San Francisco stating that he had found a solution to his problems and was willing to share it with others. On the same day, he attempted to obtain permission to hold a religious event in the town of the University of California. Police Department employee Lisa Campbell noticed the peculiar visitor and scheduled another meeting with him. Campbell uncovered Garrido's past and conducted a meeting where he arrived with his daughters. In the presence of a police officer who found certain aspects of the girl's appearance and behavior suspicious. On that same day, a search was conducted at Garrido's house. Officially having no children, Garrido claimed that the girls were his nieces. J.C. Lee continued to refer to herself as Alice and insisted that she was the girl's mother and that Garrido had been kind to them. She claimed to have escaped from her sadistic husband but could not provide any documents and often stumbled over her words. Eventually, during separate interrogations, Garrido revealed the story of the abduction, while J.C. Lee disclosed her true identity. After Garrido's arrest, J.C. Lee was reunited with her family, and although relationships were re-established immediately, according to her stepfather, she continued to experience a strong emotional attachment to Garrido. She even took in the pets that had been living with him. For a long time, she refused to give interviews, but eventually, she released a memoir titled A Stolen Life, in which she wrote about the constant pain she felt being in proximity to her captor. Despite Garrido being deemed mentally incompetent, he was sentenced to 431 years in prison, while his wife received a 36-year sentence. The state authorities officially apologized to Miss Dugard for the ineffective actions of the police and awarded her a compensation of $20 million.